Hi hello I'm Alia Bhatt and here are some of my favorite things Best of my beauty bag I call this the Alia shade the reason I call it the Alia shade is because it's so me this is my favorite shade this is from the L'Oreal infallible range it is long lasting and it's the shade 601 it's sort of pink but it's not fully pink it's like a pinky nude which is my sweet spot i don't even have a mirror in front of me and i've done it is it okay where there's makeup there's a sponge with a little heart when you can separate the heart i could break it up together and they're pretty cute and compact for me i con constantly have a small what i call a coverage kit which is my concealer my powder a powder brush and a sponge i'm very like finicky about little like pimple marks or like little zits and stuff so i keep this with me at all times because i really i i like to, i like to continuously cover and and go into a meeting or go out even sometimes when i'm sitting with my friends are over and it's just my friends but i would still cover it up just because i just i just feel like it distracts my eyes if it's not so for that this comes in like super handy so the next one a current favorite slash need i would say is this nail brush this is given to me by my makeup artist slash friend puneet and the reason is okay if you can see my nails currently they're like nothing nails i have nothing on no polish no gel because i'm filming an action movie and um, not a good idea to have any false nails on while you're doing action and hurt yourself and somebody else my nails are clean right now but while i'm filming they're not they get really dirty and i'm a little finicky about things getting sort of looking you know you get the gist so i'm literally scrubbing all the time and even if it's like i'll cut alia you have 20 minutes for the shot cool 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 give me the cut. so i'm like scrubbing because i'm just like just get it out of me even though i know it's going to get dirty again i don't know what it is but it gives me a lot of satisfaction so this is a favorite slash essential right now so the next one would be my brow brush so someone once told me that getting out of the house when you have not much time on all you need to do is your brows put on a lip like a lip color and maybe your lashes and that's about it so i'm really particular about my brows off late i don't do too much to them if you can see my brows are not filled in right now but i like to keep it sort of filled out i feel it makes your face look more vulnerable guilty pleasures i'm going to start with watching reels okay so there was a time where i was like oh, i'm not, i don't watch reels and i'm sure whatever i like to look people's photographs and i'm not into reels and then now slowly but surely i have joined the wheel band not wheel the real bandwagon a lot of random people cleaning their houses Sunday resets, Friday resets, people's 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. morning routine. I don't know why. It's just extremely therapeutic watching those reels. And then of course there's a lot of baby related things because I'm always like stopping at any baby related video that is like, you know, in terms of education and upbringing and things for them. I do get beauty reels. I recently cut my hair short. I was finding like different ways to sort of self style and different clipping hair clipping techniques and different ways to sort of dry them naturally but also make it look like sort of beachy curly cool. So yeah, a lot of hair reels as well. So my next guilty pleasure, this particular cake that you get at Magnolias. It's Tres Leches milk cake. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right because I always get it wrong most of the time, but it doesn't matter because it's really yummy. And I have to admit it's a guilty pleasure because I am guilty of eating it many a time, but I I feel no guilt actually because it's very pleasurable. My next guilty pleasure and guilty as charged because this is something that I picked up during the lockdown is watching Too Hot to Handle. on Netflix. You might be like, "Oh, Alia, why aren't you watching a movie which is like giving you some depth and you're learning something about acting or performing and stuff?" And I'm like, "Honestly, I just want to sit on my floor and take out my waxing strips and wax my legs while I'm watching Too Hot to Handle." And even now, sometimes when I'm too like tired at the end of the day, I switch on Too Hot to Handle because there's a season. I think every couple of months 
I watch a lot of reality TV. There's this show in India which is really famous called Big Boss. I mean, it's a global show, but in India, especially last season on the OTT version, my sister was in it. So I was binge watching that. You know, you can clock into the live camera and to see the house live and what's going on live on your app. And I was, I found myself doing that like in the middle of shoot and in the middle of work and stuff. But it was really nice because I found a whole new dynamic to my sister that existed before. Indian cinema. I think when I think of Indian cinema, the first name that comes to my mind is Shah Rukh Khan. And I think would come to many people's minds. And especially one of his dialogues. I don't know whether it's just his dialogue or just but that particular moment. There's this moment in his film Dilwale Dulhanya Le Jayenge, which is iconic, where he's looking at Kajol walking away and he says to himself, Raj, agar ye tujhe pyar karti hai, to ye palak ke dekhegi. Which means, if she loves me, she'll turn back. She'll look back at me. And then he goes, Palat. And he's waiting for her to turn. Palat. And then suddenly on cue, like she turns and then the music just swells and it's like butterflies, goosebumps, everything put together. But I think every girl has wanted that sort of recreation in her life where, you know, you look back and you know, there's, there's a guy looking at you or he's waiting for you to look at him. Something like that. I don't know what it is. But I think everything about Shah Rukh Khan just spells love. And to me, that moment was just all love. My next favourite, favourite sort of impactful moment from Indian cinema, again, would be Aishwarya Rai Bachchan. I think for me, a lot of my early understanding of movies, especially Indian movies, was music and songs and dance. It's a very, very large part of the celebratory factor of our movies. And when it comes to learning or being inspired by somebody who's embodied dance in the most beautiful way on screen, I can't help but think of Aishwarya Rai Bachchan. She was absolutely and is still just mesmerizing. Also gave me a lot of direction into like, whenever I had a song, I would like go to YouTube, type Aishwarya Rai songs and it would come out and I would be like looking at all her songs just to catch her expressions and the way she sort of moves from one move to another, the ease, the the way she sort of just sort of lets herself be. But at the same time, it's so perfect and it's so precise and she's just beautiful to look at. When it comes to Indian cinema, there's one person who sort of redefined slash defined beauty and that is Rekha. She is just an icon for the ages. Whether it was her red lip or her long hair or the way she did her eyes, the iconic flowers and the gajras in her hair, just that look in her eyes which of course you cannot create, it only comes from within. But she truly has left the I think largest impact in India and all, all over the world with the beauty standards that she set. I started working at the age of 18. So I sort of was brought up in the public eye in a way. If I were to look back at myself when I was young, I, remember I would cringe and look away at all my beauty moments at that time. But one thing that comes to you with time and I don't think I've still sort of gotten completely is stature gait and how to hold your own when it comes to sort of crowded, high pressure, you know, out there sort of moment. She's really inspired me in that department. The best of my everyday hair essentials. Can a girl have more hair ties? I don't think so. And this is just 0.01% of it. Because this is just what goes along with me. I have a bunch by my bedside, in my bathroom, at my dressing table, okay? So I'm never out of hair ties. I really like these silky sort of hair ties because when I'm sleeping, you know, at night or something, I don't want my hair to be pulled at. And I read somewhere that the harder ones sort of damage the hair. So this is what I use for when I need a look, when I need it to be like super tight and sleek. And this is what I use when I'm at home chilling and just sort of need it to be more relaxed and easy. The next one would be this, the L'Oreal Paris Elnet hairspray. This actually belongs to my mother-in-law. 
we were going for a movie premiere together and we were just reaching because there was going to be like media there and stuff so we were just reaching the venue so she took out her thing and she was just like putting her hair together and this is extra strong hold we were in my car so she sort of kept it down and got left behind in my car so i sent her a picture the next day saying you left this in my car and i'm not sending it back to you because it's the perfect size so coming to my next point which is when i was talking about my go to hairstyle this becomes extremely essential when i need to spray down the flyaways and i like it to be super sleek and like pulled back cuz i just think it like elongates my neck and my face looks really good and also i just don't need to then fuss and worry about my hair Actually, it's the most practical hairstyle to do, and I'm really passionate about it, as you can see, because I can't stop talking about it. And the last essential for my hair bag is the tail comb. This is extremely important because if I need to get a center parting, this is what I use. Obviously, I already have a center parting, so I'm not going to do it right now. But I've gotten really good at this. I used to be all over the place, but now it's like when I'm doing my hair, sometimes hairstylists can't get my center, and I'm like, just give it to me. I'll do it. So we are saving the best for last, yeah, motherhood. Every day is a discovery. But if I were to name three of my most precious moments, the first moment would be the first time my daughter kicked when I felt a kick. I remember I was shooting for my film Heart of Stone at the time, and uh, I was in Portugal. I was filming the next day, so I was in bed, ready to go to sleep, watching some, you know, content on my iPad and. Suddenly, I started feeling a little, little something, a flutter, and I was like, "Wait, I, I'm not watching anything to give me some flutter in my stomach. What is this?" And I was like, "What is it? Is it a kick?" And I, I wasn't sure, so I waited, and then literally, I was waiting for it to happen again. And the the thing is, when when you want the baby to kick, the baby doesn't kick. When you don't expect it, the baby will kick. Okay, and then the moment is gone. I don't think I slept that night. I was so excited because it was the first time I felt like I wasn't alone. Like I felt like there was someone with me and it was such a strange slash special feeling. I got really excited and I called my husband up immediately and he was asleep and he answered in his sleep and he was like what happened? I was like no no just she, then, you know baby kicked. And he was like okay that's great. <laughs> you know because he was far away back in Bombay. I remember that moment very very clearly. So the first time my daughter Raha she said mama it was just me and her we were playing on her playing mat and before that the back story is we were there was a fight at home okay between whether she's going to say mama first or whether she's going to say papa first so of course mama was like say mama 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 and papa was like papa 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 when she said it it was just me and her so i immediately pulled out my phone okay and i was like say it say it again what did you just say what did you just say just say it again <laughs> and she was like oh mama okay i was like raha say it in a normal voice say it in a normal voice but then she fully said it like mama of course we take a great joy and pride in that moment so i remember that moment very clearly and i have it on video so if anybody needs proof she said mama first i think the next moment um that i will never forget in my life no matter what happens is the day our daughter was born i won't forget the moment where we first heard her sound it was like unreal when i heard her voice it i felt like i had like met god or something it was so so emotional it was so un sort of surreal and it was like the minute she was put on to me i just felt an immediate like a dam of love sort of sort of burst open in our life and it just felt safe and it felt like my purpose had been met sort of a thing yeah never ever will forget that day thank you so much allo this was a lot of fun i had um, a great time just telling myself what my favorite things are and telling you as well and if you enjoyed it then great <laughs>